You ready to build these characters? Hell yeah. I am ready to build these characters. Let's do it. I'm going to build Aswold today, and you're going to build Chevy. Yeah. So I'm going to do it old school. I'm going to put it down on pencil and paper. That's just the way I like to do it. You're going to see me roll dice and everything else. And he's going to be Speedy McGee over here. Um, we're going to do this thing. Show you how fast it can be done. So last we talked about Chevy. He picked Bard as a multi-class. Uh, none of the fighter subclasses really fit who Chevy was, uh, who Chevy was going to be. So I multi-classed into Bard. For Aswold, I really haven't made a whole lot of decisions for Aswold yet. Um, I'm still up in the air. I I'm coming from the perspective of if I start out with this character, where is the journey going to take him? But I can conceptualize where he might end up at a certain level. And I'm going to try to go through that. So Chevy, the name, um, was a nod to Mr. Travis Willingham's character uh, from Critical Role, uh, Ford. So we established in an earlier video that he was sort of an outcast of an orc uh, commune. Do they have villages, towns? Sure. Uh, hunter, raider party. Um, it was made fun of because he was half uh, and not full and sort of had interests and, and talents that were looked down upon. He wasn't the strong barbarian type. And now leaving said uh, area uh, of his life and moved on to an adventuring party with friends. Uh, has moved on to Bard. So, you bring your character sheet up on D&D Beyond. If you'll click the picture of your character, we can manipulate and manage character and levels. With a quick load. So we're going to take these characters today to level 10. So we've already got two in fighter, one in bard. So we'll take bard to eight. Now, if you'll click over here where class features, you'll see that we got at second level, jack of all trades, uh, allows you to add a proficiency bonus round down to any ability check that you don't already have a proficiency in, which is nice. Uh, Song of rest. You can help wounded allies uh, during a short rest. Anyone that hears the performance can roll some hit dice and get some, some health back. Our first choice we get to make is highlighted here in blue, uh, our Bardic College. We're going to pick College of Swords. I think that that makes sense. from the fact that we got to get some training uh, being an orc, growing up with orcs. So we are proficient enough and maybe more than some. We get a fighting style. We're going to pick dueling. When you're wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons, you gain a plus two to damage rolls with that weapon. We get a blade flourish. And as our as his character progresses, he's going to be more and more colorful. Uh, we'll get more into that shortly. At fourth level, we get a ability score improvement or a feat. You know me, we've talked about this already. I like feats, and I think actor is going to fit where this character is going. It gives me a bump in charisma, which will help. Then we get font of inspiration, counter charm, we get an extra attack at 6th level. Finally for our 8th, we get another ability score improvement, or you guessed it, another feat. Now this is where I got a little sideways. 
there's so many to choose from, right? So many, there's a few that actually make sense with this character. You could take Skilled, Sentinel, Orcish Fury, makes some sense, right? And then, Dual Wilder. Let's take a look at Orcish Fury. I think at a certain point during this character's arc that they're going to come to terms with their half-orc side. And I think that they're going to, maybe with the help of, of the party members and some encouragement, start to embrace that. Um, so we'll take uh, Strength or Con. We'll, we'll take a Con bump. And that is our character through level 10. So that's level 10 for <laughs> Chevy in about, I don't know, six minutes, something like that. The old school technique is going to take a lot more than that. This is the player's handbook, where all of that comes from. But that lays it out right in front of you in a very consumable way that helps you speed through that process. It's wonderful. And if I have a choice today, I do choose that. But will I still go and pull out my own character sheet and then apply the data that I find on the app back to it just so I can have it? Yes, I will do that. So this is Aswold, and I will show Aswold to you. It's a beautiful character sheet. Yep, chose it um, specifically because of what I said earlier about how I like to bucket my stats with my skills, or bucket my skills with my stats. So I'm going to go through this process as quickly as I can, but the point here is, is that from conceptualizing your character, you have already completed many of the steps that you're going to find in the book or on the app. Chevy and Aswold have been conceptualized from the beginning of our videos, and we know all of the things about how we want to build them. It's the future of them that we don't know. So let's begin with race. I'm going to mention this is a very nice copy of the player's handbook. Uh, it is the foil covered uh, versions of the player's handbook, the DMG, and the monster manual. You can get that physical bundle on D&D Beyond along with the books inside of the app. So you'll get both the physical book itself shipped to you and the digital version in the app and I'll show you the case for those as well no I didn't even know that was sitting there so so this is the case for it's them more of that high gloss on top of matte that always looks so good so pull out the monster manual and show that and show that all foil covers including a foil finish DM screen that way. All right. Put those back up and we'll get back to it. So, why haven't you been bringing that out for gameplay? I've had it. You've had it out? I've had it every time, but I haven't brought it out. <laughs> okay. So, open up the player's handbook. 
and uh, you're going to look very quickly at the beginning, and it is going to say, creating a character step by step. Okay? Right there in the PHB, it's going to be page 11. That's where it's going to begin. So we're just going to flip to page 11. Y'all, this is all news to me. Step by step, you're just going to walk through. Choose a race. Aswold is a half-elf. We already know this. We've conceptualized him, chosen that for a very specific reason. Humans look at half-elves like they're elves. Elves look at half-elves like they're humans. He's caught in between. He has no allies in society when he starts out from that perspective. And he's disgruntled because of that. Half-elf. So on this character sheet, race is right here. I wrote down half-elf. I know his name because I've already chosen it. It is Aswold. Pobblecott. Pobblecott! Good job! <laughs> And he is a medium-sized creature, so I will just put M there to remind me of that. Now, we have a race, we have a name, we even have a beginning class, which is Aristocrat. You can barely see that, but thank you, a renderer's D and D resource from TripleCritFandom.com. I really like this particular class, especially for this particular character. And now we get to do my favorite thing. Which is? We get to roll stats. <laughs> oh, no. I can't roll stats without organizing my dice, so give me two seconds. It's not wanting to let go. It will not let go. Dragon scales keep me dice. Me don't like it. All right. So how do we roll dice? 3d6. 3d6 would be that, but I'm a generous DM. 46. 46 and drop the lowest drop the lowest so I'm gonna choose these three little ones and one flippy shiny one we're gonna do this very quickly and you'll see the rolls but then we'll get right back to business four four six of oh, the mouth hole is a six. the mouth hole is a six so a six a five and a four. 15. 2 and a 3. Ugly 6. There's another 2. That's a total of an 11. Mm. So scary. So scary. Take that one and throw it away. Let's make sure that that is a 6. That is not a 6. That is... <laughs> what are you... That is a four. And this is a six. And that is, of course, a six, which means that is a one. Okay, so that is four, six, six. Sixteen. I'm going to take one off of that former one, since we know that's actually a four. So you'd be with the four corners and then the one eyeball? Is that how that's? Was it on the first stat or the second stat? First. I think, well, it, I think it was. Six. It's it's weird how they do that. Yeah, well, I think they. It, it's a little monster die that I picked up. So, hmm. all right, three more to go. We know that's a four. There's a two. There's a one. Let's bring back the two. That's a nine, ten, eleven. There's our one. Not bad. Not bad. Thirteen. And eliminate A3, and we get a 12 out of it. Now, typically, whenever I'm the DM, I'll do two sets. I'm going to roll that very quickly. You don't have to struggle through this one, and I'll just write down the numbers and pick the best set.
Okay, here we are back with the secondary stat. Um, you could do it one of two ways. You can look at it and just gauge it really quick, or you can total them up and then choose whichever one you like based off of total points. But it makes no sense to me to have a 10 in two different areas and a 9 when I have all double digits on the first score, right? This would be the one for me. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. So I will pull that over, and then I will assign them based off of what I know Pobblecott to be. He is not a strength character. He is a dex character. So I am going to put down an 11. Mark it off. You can't see the mark off, can you? Let me bring it over here. I have marked off the 11. His dex is his best stat however physical stat so I'm going to give him a 13 for dexterity and his high scores 16 and 14 I'm going to put in intelligence and wisdom intelligence because he hasn't been in the world for very long 14 on wisdom because he is naturally a wise character his charisma will be a 12, and his constitution will be an 11. Done. I have my stats. We've already chosen a class. I'm going to level mine m much differently. So you went straight to 10 with ease with the app. I am going to take time to do mine, and I'm not going to demonstrate that entire process, but I am going to talk about the journey that I see him going on. Um, so, Aristocrat, hopefully we can show this to you as a third... Remember, I'm going third party here. Right. Right? So, I'm going outside of the boundaries. With the third party option, with Aristocrat, that I've pulled off of the internet, number one, you've got to talk with your DM and make sure that that's approved. Number two, if you are using the app, you're probably not going to get this resource because it's outside of the purview of D&D Beyond. If you do get it, you're going to get it from another app besides D&D Beyond. We love D&D Beyond, so that's the way that we would go. The only way that you would be able to utilize a third-party class like this is if you either create it yourself or find the resource that it belongs to. I can already tell you, you're not going to find the resource. So you would have to create the entire class inside of the app. You ever done that? There are options on here for custom origin, custom race. Uh, you can even go on the homebrew side of D&D Beyond and build items, races, classes. Now it's a, it's a little heavy on the effort, but... If you're going to be playing this character for a long-term campaign, absolutely worth it. Probably worth it at that point. He's right. I did build several custom items and monsters when we ran the King's Gambit. And it was not fun for me. But it might be your forte, you know? Um, so let's go back to the character. What do you think those are? Do you think those are the pluses, or do you think these are the pluses? The modifiers. Yeah. Um, it's usually a top and bottom thing. Um, not sure. I think that it could be whatever you want it to be. I think it could be whatever you want it to be. There is a circle that could be a zero. I don't know. What's a zero? If it were me, I would want them right next to each other. Okay, so let's do it that way. So we know 13 is a plus 1. 12 is also a plus 1. Do we have any 10s or 11s in here? Yeah, strength. Oh, look at that. That's a big fat zero. Now, I'm from military, so that zero has a slash through it. All right. 16 is a plus 3. And 14 is a plus 2. I know that by heart. You can look up statistics and their modifiers inside of the book. 
it actually gives you those right here on page 13. I like it. So we have done that. Race, name, size, class, stats. Currently I'm going to make him first level. His alignment. Hmm. What's Chevy? Chevy is a lawful neutral. Never really fit in with the the raiding crowd that he grew up with. He really just wanted to go out in the world and do some good and expand on his talent that was looked down upon. Um, his creative side uh, was always stifled, so he just not really wanted to make waves. Um, just be a, a good force in the world. As wool is anything but lawful. He uh, does not follow anything that would closely align to lawful. Um, he struggles with which way he's going to go in life. But let's read what it says in the book right here about alignment. Choose your character's alignment. The moral compass that guides his or her decisions and ideals. Alignment is the key to which way your character will choose their actions. Absolutely. Alignment is, is that's half the character. It really, really is. Especially for the role play aspect of it. I am going just off the cuff chaotic neutral. I like it. Just makes sense to me. From the book, at this step it's going to tell you to choose equipment. When you choose equipment, you're going to be able to figure out your armor class and choose your, your weapons. Didn't Chevy pick a very specific weapon? Yes. It is a scimitar. It is flashy. It has lines. It has curves. Uh, as Chevy's character progresses through the levels, more colorful and flashy and flamboyant and flavorful he will become. Aswold was given his weapon from his manservant. Uh, it's going to be a very ornate knife, which will qualify as a dagger, but it's going to be sacred to him in the respect that it came from... It should be an heirloom. It's not because he was kicked out of the family, but it's special to him in that respect. And there's a big part of him that probably expects to get vengeance with that knife. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it goes into armor class, equipment, and then goes into beyond first level in the book for your progress of creating the character. The expectation from just reading this is, oh yeah, go, go to the equipment chart and pick some equipment off of it. Get you an adventurer's kit and do your thing, right? But when we talk about conceptualizing the character, everything means something. Absolutely. So you chose your scimitars. You chose your loot. You chose hand your drum. garb. Yeah. What? Hand drum. Oh, hand drum. Yes. You okay. chose these pieces right. because they fit Chevy. Correct. He was given this knife, this ornate dagger Absolutely. that he carries with him. Later on, he will seek out and learn to carry a sword in a cane. I like it. But at some point in here, you are going to choose a background. And for Aswold's background, I am going to choose Noble. Makes sense. There is a lot to Noble, but it falls right into play with his family and what he hopes to get back and go back to. Or take over. Some backgrounds in D&D are more flavor. Some actually have some 
real in-game advantages. Noble has where you get to choose a gaming set that you're familiar with, whether it be dice, dragon chess, playing cards, or three dragon ante. You get proficient in a language, and did you know they actually have three dragon ante? Oh, well, that needs to be a thing we do on here. Yeah, at some point in time. And then the flavor part is that people will treat you as a noble based off of how you carry yourself and your dress. So that's something to work out with the DM. At the point that I choose noble as the background, it, the the static version of that that's in the book, it it wants you to go ahead and establish those things, right? But for Aswold, he has to win it back in one way or another. He either has to earn it or he has to take it. And so you've got to work that out with your DM, but that's the flavor of the character. Noble as a background just doesn't grant you these things in this respect. I want to create him where it's a story, right? So that's what I'm going to do with him. Uh, but for Noble here, I will put down... Um, what, what was the, the game? Three Dragon Annie? Sure, that's yeah. one of them. Yeah, so I'll just put that down in my uh, equipment, which is not on that page. In my inventory, I'm going to write down three Dragon Annie. And then here on Roguish Archetype, obviously this character sheet is built for a rogue, right? And that's where we're going to head next after the first level of aristocrat that I choose. Uh, but all of the features and traits that we pick over the course of the character will go into this list. With aristocrat, level one, I'm going to go ahead and write down those things that are granted to Aswald. High standards, old money, new money, and manservant. Fantastic. I'm going to say he gets leather. What's my armor class with leather? Leather is... Eleven plus your dexterity modifier. My dexterity modifier is... Plus one. So, that means my AC is a twelve. Done deal. Proficiency. Hmm. Probably need to go back and see what my proficiency is. Table appears in your class description and shows your proficiency bonus. Fantastic, which is a plus two for a first level character. All first level characters start out with a plus two proficiency bonus. Plus two. Now this particular character sheet has given these, uh, I don't know how to address these. I guess these are quick skills that you're going to look at, right? So you got your investigation, perception, and insight right here mm -hmm. in front of you. Um, and you have it listed in your skill list as well. But here, it's a quick glance, right? So you would fill those in based off of your stats. Here you can see I've highlighted athletics, strength, acrobatics, and everything under it until it gets to Arcana is dex. Arcana starts the intelligence trek. It gives all of the skills that go under intelligence. Wisdom. Every skill under Wisdom until you get to Charisma-based skills, which is the last part. Deception, Intimidation, Performance, and Persuasion. That's the way that I like them. I just like to know what I'm working with. I would write down my weapon, my to hit, and my damage of that weapon, and then I would fill in all of the other categories. 
Based off of an intelligence of 16, you should get a set number of languages to choose from. So we're not going to finish up the entire character sheet here on the camera. Nobody wants to see that. But it is about fleshing out a character, not necessarily a character sheet. You're going to put all of your pieces into play, whether it's on the app or on the character sheet. But the idea here is who is your character at the end of the day, and do all of the pieces fit? Yeah, knowing your character who they are, what they look like, how they act, how they react to certain things, is the game of d and It is a RPG, specifically a TTRPG, but the important part is the RP, the role play. That's right. That's what brings the immersion together. We've said it many times. I know how I want Aswold to begin. He's probably going to progress into Rogue right after Aristocrat. And then shortly after Rogue, he's going to find his way into a specialty, which will be Way of the Shadow Monk. I think it fits his persona to dip in and out of shadows and be a very, very sneaky type character. So you start in the homebrew, dip in Rogue, and then dip in Monk. I like it. Chevy, as we've talked about, will probably finish in Bard. Now, most campaigns don't take you into high-level play, which is why I've only built this to 10. But let's talk about decisions. When faced with morality, how does Aswold react? Uh, give me an example. It will vary. So, there's a shop. The shopkeep turns his back. There is something on the shelf to your left, within hand's reach, that you've always wanted but can't afford. What do you do? Easily take it. Cool. Great. That's, that's, that's knowing instantly what your character would do. Levels 1 through 3 of this particular character is going to be scrounging for everything that he can get. Even though he's got a secret manservant in the background teaching him things. That's where his monkish attributes come from. He's not necessarily going to gain wealth and progress day-to-day -day paying for a meal. He's going to be scrounging from the streets in order to get fed. So he's going to, he's going to still cheat and lie his way into higher levels. Party interactions with your fellow adventurers. Does that transfer over there as well, or is there a different moral conduct for allies? If a DM was to put me in a group right away, a smart DM would have us all know each other at the beginning. Uh, a naive DM would not have us know each other at the beginning, and therefore we would establish our connections along the way, which is well, we'll talk about that in another episode. But if Aswold was put into a party that he did not know, he would put on a good face, and he would be something that he's not, and he would look for opportunities if they came along from party members, and he would take advantage of them. He would be that character that might see a shiny bobble and attempt to pickpocket one of his own players at the table. I like it. And so what would Chevy be like in a party? So, <clears throat> like you said, levels one through three, um, I think he would be very reserved, quiet, shy, um, used to being the point of ridicule, used to being kicked, having things thrown at him, uh, taking the scraps from the raids. But as time went on and he gained 
um, more trust for his party members. I think that he would soon blossom into a, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Hey, let me get that for you. Just, just eager, helpful, creative. Um, the clothes would go from drab hides and leathers to a fancy jacket, gold buttons, maybe a cape, lots of color as, as his character bloomed and, and went into more of that bardic aspect. As time went on, he would start to put his party first um, in a lot of situations in combat in exploration, it would be, how can I help my new friends because they gave me so much? So, you're saying that his arc will take place into a progress of more colorful clothing and representative of his energy coming out to bear and his appreciation for his companions because they give him respect. Every bit of what you see on Chevy is representative of what is inside Chevy. As Wold, the, the type of character that he is, he has to have a turning point to where he be develops trust with another companion in the party. Whatever that looks like, that's when he would turn off the I'm going to take from you and turn on the I need to keep you close to me. But to earn that, to develop that trust in another companion at the table, it would take a very long time for him to do that. And other than that, um, he would probably see almost everyone at his disposal until he chooses which way he's going to go down his path. So what would Chevy do if someone at the table, a player, had a character that really ridiculed you <clears throat> he would probably early on almost shut down um, until later levels I think around level eight as a character he would start to gain the confidence to, to almost give it back but in a nice way right like a jab but I, I didn't I didn't mean it that bad right just yeah, my, my, okay, my bad, my bad, right? Um, almost apologetic in it, but still starting to stand up for himself. I think by level 10, though, it would be um, you might want to be careful because there are mockery spells. Yeah, yeah. Followed by a quick heal, right? We're not, you know, he's still Chevy. Uh, he would definitely cut you down and then help you back up. Aswold would not. <laughs> Aswell would just simply cut you down. If you didn't serve a purpose to him and he had the opportunity behind closed doors, uh, that knife would probably go into your heart, if at all possible. If he was ridiculed sure. by someone. Sure. He, he desires respect. He desires um, companionship that is loyal. At, at his core. That, yeah. is his, that is his, in my eyes, his whole being is craving that respect and that loyalty and acknowledgement. That's right. So two very different characters in the way they would approach <clears throat> the world. Absolutely. It's important to know these core pieces of your character. No matter what you put on the page, these are the boundaries by which you will play. And a lot of it does have to do with alignment. So speaking of, of always picking things that are core to your character... When we go to spells, all these spells were picked based off of who he is as a character. Dancing lights, prestidigitation, uh, disguise self, um, even moving forward in level. Um, now that we have gone up from level 3 to level 10... You know, we're probably going to pick things. Uh, charm person. Um, going all the way down to some of these fourth level spells. Maybe hallucinary terrain. Um, we're going to go more of a, of a illusionary 
build here. Um, compulsion could be a good one. Um, compel them to be your friend. You know, major image would be a good one to pick. Uh, dispel magic, maybe. Um, but you can just start picking these that, that, that really mean something to your character. Lesser restoration to really kind of take care of those friends that you've made that are taking such good care of you. Unseen Servant would pair well uh, with your character, um, I think, from a comedic standpoint. Comedic and uh, a slight therapy for Aswold having the control of something that could serve him. Silent image. Um, you know, so just, just make sure when you're picking your spells to pick something that, that means something to your character. Um, I'm at seven. I have a few more that I can still pick, but you, you get some some meaningful things here that, that go well with who your character is. You know, taking the pencil and writing it down on a character sheet and going through the book has developed so much over time. It's an arduous process now that we have the app. The app makes things so simple. There were portions of this build uh, that I desired to go through the book with, and sure. I, I found myself struggling. I really did, because you've got to flip back and forth when everything is so well right at your fingertips in the app. Um, I would highly recommend the app today. Back in the day, it felt good. There's a nostalgia there, but for every new player that's born in the last decade, you probably want to go with the app. Or not even born, just started playing. Um you know, a lot of us now, we get the player's handbook in the app for free. But we usually only go to it when we're looking for something. You don't have to do any of that um, with this, which which is was refreshing to see where all that came from. This reminds me a great deal of one of my friends coming back in um, into a game that we hadn't played uh, Dungeons and Dragons with for a very long time and he struck up the conversation and he wanted to play a second edition game and for me that's what I grew up on I was like yeah let's go do that let's do that second edition I love Thacko it's awesome and we got in there and started playing this game and it was horrendous not wow. great wow. yeah fifth edition all the way Pathfinder all the way app all the way so this is a character sheet from Brett Bullion I purchased this particular character sheet for the rogue uh, his character sheets look incredible they look awesome I did some work to make the dark background for this one but you can see by the level of art that's on these character sheets um, it stands out from your typical character sheet I love it I recommend it please go visit his site Check them out. Rolling dice is fun. <laughs> Making a character is fun. At the end of the day, this is a game. But role-playing that character needs to come from you and how you want to do it. From the voice to the mannerisms to the look to the description, the character is brought to life from you. So make sure that you enjoy doing what you're here to do. Don't let other players, or even your DM for that matter, dictate who you're going to play or how you're going to play them. Be you. Be your character. Guys, please like, share, subscribe, and join us again here at Roleplay University.